for the very first time, I want to give you a very, very storehouse welcome. Amen. Just before we get into our service this morning, I just want us to spend some time just taking uh, this few announcements. It's wonderful to have uh, Frank with us, Frank Hartley with us this morning to bring us the word. I'm sure you're here with your, your wife, praise God. <laughs> it's wonderful to see both of you here. And uh, we are looking forward to what God has for you, uh, you know, for the Storehouse Church. We're truly, truly awaiting that. Praise God. As we do on Wednesday from half seven, we meet here as a church to pray. We've been hearing from time to time that it is important for us to pray. Praying together makes us, you know, a strong church. And a church that doesn't pray is a weak church. We don't want to be that weak church. We want to be a strong church. We want to be a powerful church. That will move, you know, this community for God. Amen. And so if you have the time, it's, it's not even if you have the time. You should be able to make the time. You should. You know, when we come here on Wednesday, it's just a few of us that normally come to pray. You know, if two can, one can chase 1,000 and two can chase 10,000, you can imagine how, how many people, how many enemies or devils or, or demons we can change if we, are ten, if we are ten of us here. Let us come together on Wednesday to pray. Half past seven, it's going to be powerful. Amen. Next Sunday, guess what? I am going to bring the word of God. Praise the Lord. Please pray for me as I prepare this week to you know, minister the word next Sunday. I'm sure it's going to be powerful. Amen. The last Sunday of this month is going to be the 30th of January, which is our gospel service. And our brother, David English, is going to bring the, the gospel message. So this is a time that we want to invite the community that are saved to really come and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a time that you want to invite somebody. If you can, just, just say to somebody, listen, come to this time of our service. It's going to bless them. And we'll have a time to, you know, give people the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. I have been told that next Wednesday at half past 11, the, the, leadership, the leadership church is going to meet the North Lanarkshire uh, property team to discuss the, the rent review. We've been praying about this for some time now. You want to pray into that this week that the Lord will favor the, the leadership team and as they present their proposal to this, uh, the Lanarkshire Council, they will have favor before them. Amen. You want to pray seriously to that. Hallelujah. It's time to worship God. Hallelujah. Are you excited about that? If you are, I just want to read a scripture to us. Lauren, permit me. Give me a few minutes. I will be very quick here. Psalm 34, verse 1 to 3 says that, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. And the verse 8 says that, Oh, taste and see, for the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who take refuge in him. Hallelujah. This morning, are you here to bless the Lord? The Bible says we should bless the Lord at all times. Not sometimes, but at all times. When the Bible says bless the Lord at all times, it just means all times. The time that you feel not even to bless the Lord. The time that you are in pain. The time that you are asking for something and it's not coming forth. The time that you pray so many times for something and you, you don't even have an answer. That even that time, bless the Lord. This morning, I just want to humbly ask you if you can just be on our feet. I just want us to spend a few minutes preparing our hearts as we go into a time of worship. Please, if you can, just be on your feet this morning. Let's just begin to ponder over the, the things that has gone on in your life this week. You may probably have gone through some challenges. You may probably have asked the Lord for certain things and you have not even received an answer to those. And you are wondering in your head or in your mind 
on in your heart. When at all is this God going to hear me? But the Bible is saying to you this morning, bless the Lord at all time. Even in that time, you want to just acknowledge God this morning. Pray this morning and say, that, Lord, I am here. Prepare me so I can give you a meaningful worship. I can give you a meaningful praise. My lips will sing of your praise this morning. I will shout it unto you this morning because you have been so good to me. If you don't have anything at all, you have breath in your loins this morning. You can breathe this morning. That is a blessing from the Lord. Many went to bed last night. They could not rise up from bed this morning. You are so privileged to be here. That is enough to begin to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, this morning. You want to say that in your heart. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Open up your mouth this morning and say, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your presence, Lord. May I never leave this place the same. Don't touch me, Lord. Let this time of God be a meaningful time, of Lord, in your presence. The Bible says that who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Except that who have a clean heart, a clean hand, and a pure heart. This morning you won't pray that, Lord, prepare my heart. If there be anything in me, if I have an iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. This morning you want the Lord to hear you. The Bible even says that knowing good and not doing it, even a sin, we cannot run away from that. It's an opportunity for us to just come before God and say, Lord, I have sinned against you in so many ways. This morning I want to experience you. I want to encounter you. I don't want to leave this place the same. Because the Bible says that no one goes to the presence of the Lord and live the same. If that scripture is true, it has to be true in your life this morning. And if you leave this place the same, then it's something that you have done that is preventing you from, from reaching out to God this day. You want to pray that prayer, Lord, prepare my heart. Let me love you here the same, Lord. Let me experience you, Lord. Let me encounter you, Lord. Let me have an attach with you, Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for such an awesome opportunity you have given unto us. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, when he shed his blood, the Bible says that you gave us a direct access to your throne room of grace. The Bible says that we can come before you, we can cry, Abba, Father, and you hear us. Lord, as a church, we come before you this morning. We're praying, O Lord, for the opening of heavens. We're praying that, Lord, the heavens will be open unto the storehouse here this morning, my God. And every one of us, Lord, that has presented ourselves this morning, God, will have an experience with you, Lord. An experience that we will not, will not forget. An encounter, an unforgettable encounter, Lord. Touch us this morning. We pray for our worship time, Lord. We pray for the time of, of the sermon. We ask the Lord that you speak to us. You speak to us, Lord, through your servant, this Lord. Let your word come in power and authority. Break the yokes, Lord. Let every yoke of bondage be broken this morning. Let your presence take away every sorrow in our heart this morning. May we leave this place rejoicing and praising your name. We thank you, Father, because you are here. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us give up to your worship team. Praise God. Happy morning, church. And you said that in your prayer, Julius. It is a privilege. It is a privilege to be here. It's a blessing. And it's a blessing to bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And it's wonderful to have Victoria join us this morning. Somebody beside me. Yay! <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Victoria. Um, so we're just going to start and praise our God with I Stand Amazed. How marvelous, how wonderful, and our song shall ever be. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus.
there I just had such a sense that there is someone here today and you're going through a situation and it's a really difficult and hard situation but God is saying to you today bless me 
trust me. Trust my faithfulness. I am with you and I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I will hold you as you go through this. I am with you. Trust in my word. Trust in my cross. Trust in my blood. Trust in my faithfulness. I am with you. his holy name. Hallelujah. It's lovely to have Frank with us this morning. So we'll pass over to you, Frank. Thank you. It was beautiful to sing that last uh, chorus that you were singing about trusting in his word and trusting in the Lord, because that's really what I want to speak to you about this morning, is about having faith in our God. It's good that we can have faith, and uh, if I've given my sermon a title of any kind, it's amazing faith. If you ever invite me back again, you might get amazing grace, <laughs> but it's amazing faith, and, and the faith I want to speak to you about is the faith that we have in our God. We prayed a moment or two ago that there might be someone who might find faith and trust in God. But I want us to think about having faith in our God. I wonder this morning if I can ask you, you don't have to answer. I wonder if I can ask you, is there someone that you have faith in? Someone that you really share faith in? I can think of all sorts of people that you might be thinking of, and I want to be a wee bit controversial, and I want to say this to you. I can think of one man that you'll have an opinion on, faith or not. Do you have faith in Mr. Boris Johnston <laughs> as our Prime Minister? Now, some of you are laughing, but some of you will support him and what he's been doing. And some of you will not have a great deal of faith in him now. But what do you think of Boris and his uh, parties? There's something for you to think about. But before we go any further, we need to turn our eyes on the Scriptures. I've asked Christine to come up and... Uh, could Christine have a microphone, please? You come up and speak to us, Christine. Lovely to be worshipping with you today. It's lovely to see you all, and isn't it wonderful to praise God together? Thinking all these months when we weren't able to meet together, it was really hard, wasn't it? Because we're told that two or three gathered together in God's name, and yet we couldn't do that. But we were able to do it over Zoom, etc. But it wasn't the same as actually being together as a body of God's people. The reading this morning is taken from the New Testament, is taken from Matthew chapter 8, and we begin at verse 5. Matthew chapter 8, and beginning at verse 5. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. 
Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. Amen. And we pray that God will help us as we expand this reading and learn from him. Thank you. Faith makes things possible. It doesn't make things easier, but it makes things possible. As I came into the church this morning, I spoke to several people that I know uh, so well here. In fact, uh, one of the men came to me and challenged me to a race. I don't think he was wanting to challenge somebody that he he couldn't beat, but it's lovely to be here this morning and to worship with you and to think a wee bit about our faith in this great God that we've been thinking of. You remember Jesus delivered the Sermon on the Mount and there he proclaimed the Beatitudes. You remember afterwards he taught on the principles of salt and light. He spoke about the law, about anger, about adultery, about divorce and vows and and revenge. He taught about love for your enemies and giving to the needy. He taught about money and the possessions and, and not condemning others. He spoke about prayer and about the golden rule, about the narrow gate, about the tree and the fruit and the true followers, and about building on the solid rock. Jesus delivered a message on Christian living, living that covered every aspect of our lives. And today, as I say, I would like to address the question of faith, and in particular about that Roman soldier that Christine read to us about, the soldier who asked for Jesus' help. The Roman officer's story, which we heard today, is quite controversial in itself because it's told in both the Gospel of Matthew and in the Gospel of Luke. And as we see, there's a discrepancy between the two tellers of the story. In Matthew's account, Matthew has a man coming to Jesus. But in Luke's account, Luke has a man sending some people to Jesus and asking him to come. The point I'm making is often used to speak about inaccuracies in the Bible. And it seems to me that the simple fact is that the two writers just recorded it in a different way. Matthew was there. He was an eyewitness to what happened. Luke was not. Luke's record of the incident was a verbal exchange between himself and someone else. Now, I don't think that difference is in any way important to the lesson, which is about the Roman officer's amazing faith in Jesus. And today I want to have a look at these accounts and try to understand them better. Matthew chapter 8, when Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, My young servant lies in bed, paralyzed and in terrible pain. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. We will begin by examining this officer's faith and his young servant a bit more closely. 
The Roman officer, of course, was a Gentile, not a Jew. And look, we hear that the officer heard about Jesus. He sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. And so they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves his help, your help, he does, they said. If anyone deserves the help of the Lord Jesus, this man does. Because he loves the Jewish people, he even built a synagogue for us. In Luke's account, it's a bit different. The officer sends others. He's not been arrogant. He's been humble. The Roman heard about Jesus, heard about the miracles he had performed. And in Luke's account, he confesses to Jesus through others, I'm not even worthy to come and meet him. Do you know, we've been here this morning and what is the house of God. We've been invited to come here. We have been praising the Lord Jesus Christ and praying to Him. We are not worthy to do this, but Jesus makes us worthy. God invites us to come here. And so, He sends men to Jesus to plead on His behalf. And this would have been unheard of the fact that these two enemies, virtually, had an affection for each other. But the Jews had an affection for this man because he built them a synagogue. This would have been similar to a Roman church. The Roman officer would not have been able to worship in the temple at Jerusalem. He was not a Jew, but he could attend services here in this synagogue. And the Roman officer had great affection for the Jewish beliefs and the concept of just one true God. He's beginning to show his faith in God. He admired the Jews' devotions to each other and their meticulous devotion to faith in God. Perhaps he was becoming or had become a believer. The relationship between this outsider and God's people is amazing in itself, and his willingness to support the house of God perhaps even puts us to shame. There's a, a famous church statistician, George Barna, and he gives some statistics. He says, amongst adults who regularly attend church, 37% didn't give a penny to the church in the last year. He goes on to say that only between 3 and 5% of people who do give tithe their, uh, their uh, gifts. And he says the average donation by an adult who attends church is £13 a week. Should we be giving so much more to the church and to the God that we love? Let me share a wee story with you. There was a, a pastor, we'll, we'll just call him Pastor Smith, and they got a phone call from the income tax people and they said, is this Pastor Smith? Oh, yes, it is, he said. He says, I'm calling to inquire about a member of your church. His name is Dr. Jones. Do you recognize the name? Yes, he's a member of the church. Well, the tax people said, last year the doctor claimed that he made a sizable tax deduction contribution to your church. Is that true? Well, I'll have to get the treasurer to check that for you. How much did Dr. Jones say he contributed? 20,000 pounds, the tax people said. There was a long pause, and the pastor says, I'll tell you what I'll do. He says, you call me back tomorrow, and I'll make sure that that was true. <laughs> I think there's much we can learn from this Roman officer's life and his giving to the church. Matthew describes the soldier's servant as a young person. Perhaps he was the Roman officer's personal attendant. Uh, the word suggests that there was a very strong bond between the centurion and his servant. And it adds that this young person was considered to be a possession, a slave, with the ability to purchase his own freedom. He 
excuse me. The word that Luke uses suggests that the servant's position was not as a slave, but just of a man of lower status. <coughs> the Roman officer had a great affection towards his young charge. It was a love that crossed social and perhaps even racial boundaries. Jesus was willing to answer. In Matthew chapter 8, we read, the man said, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come to my house. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. We often hear about the amazing grace which God shows to his people. But here we're looking at the amazing faith that this Roman had in God. We're witnessing faith. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And the servant was healed that very hour. We really need to dig deeper into what this officer is saying because amazing faith lies deep within us. He knows that we're not worthy of having Jesus in his home. He knows that Jesus is superior to him. He recognizes that what he's requesting is a matter of grace and not merit. Where, where there would be no other man that the Roman would have felt inferior to. Amazing faith begins when we humble ourselves. You might well think that you're one of the best, and I'm sure that you are, but you know you're inferior to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even his walking on this earth as a man, we are inferior to him because he is still the Lord. So our amazing faith begins when we humble ourselves. It begins when we recognize that we're not worthy of, to ask anything of him. It begins when we realize that ours is an act of his is an act of grace when our, gra when our requests are granted. Do we feel that we can pray? Do you feel that you can pray? Perhaps you're the person who prays every day, perhaps even every hour. You know, the most simple prayer is just one word, help. Others of us can pray for slightly longer than that. But amazing, amazing faith also begins when we believe the written word, the word of God as it's written there. Think of the steps that the people in the Bible took to show their faith. Learn from others seated amongst us. Learn their life stories. And their life stories are there for that purpose. Amazing faith begins when we understand God's authority over us. Whatever we do, wherever we are, God has authority over us. And we must submit to that authority. There was a man called Christian Herter, and he was the governor of Massachusetts. And he was running for office for the second time. This was the governor seeking re-election. And one day, it was a long, long, busy day of campaigning, and he hadn't had any lunch. And he arrived in a church that was having a barbecue. As he walked down the serving line, he was famished. And he held his plate out to the woman who was serving up the chicken. And she put a piece of chicken on his plate and she turned to the next person in the line. Excuse me, said the governor. Do you mind if I have another piece of chicken? Sorry, the woman said. I'm supposed to give one piece of chicken to each person. But I'm starved, said the governor. And the woman said, I'm sorry, only one per customer. And the governor said, do you know who I am? I'm the governor of this state. And the woman said, do you know who I am? I'm the lady in charge of the chicken. <laughs> Think of what this Roman officer said. I'm under the authority of my superior officers. I have authority over my, my soldiers. I only need to say go and they go. I need to say come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. He is recognizing what authority means. 
and he's recognizing that Jesus is under the authority of the Lord God. Remember, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. All authority. And this officer understood the authority that Jesus had over illness and over death. And like his own soldiers and slaves, illness and death would have to obey the spoken word of Jesus. Now, if we believe that, we can believe that we can come to him with our illness, with our problems, with our needs. And Jesus will answer your prayers. Jesus will answer your prayers. Have faith that this can happen. Have faith that the Lord Jesus can simply reach out and bless you and touch you and heal you. And, and, and oh, it's just a wonderful thought, isn't it? We must accept the authority of the Jesus, and we must recognize His authority over granting our requests. Amazing faith begins when we amaze Jesus. When Jesus heard this, He was amazed. Jesus was amazed. And turning to those who were with Him, He says, I tell you the truth, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. Jesus was amazed. He was in wonder. He was astonished. In all of his travels and all of his teachings, no one had understood faith the way this German soldier did. He, sorry, he was a Gentile soldier. He wasn't German at all. He was amazed at how well, well this man understood God's authority. He was amazed at how well this man understood the authority that Jesus had over illness. You don't even have to come in my home. Just say the word and he will be healed. Jesus was only other, uh, the only other time Jesus was amazed was one time in his hometown. And it says in Mark, because of their unbelief, Jesus couldn't do any miracles amongst them except to place his hands on a few sick people. Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. What a terrible thing for these people to hear. He was in wonder, astonished and surprised at their unbelief. He was amazed at the unbelief of God's mercy, their unbelief in God's word. He was amazed at their unbelief in his authority over illness and over death. I suppose that everyone falls into one of these two categories. Either like the Roman servant, the Roman officer, we believe through faith that Jesus is able to accomplish all that we ask him. Or like those in his hometown, we have no faith that Jesus will accomplish all that we ask. And do you know, even partial faith, even if you've just got a wee bit of faith, it shows a lack of complete faith. We can have faith and the Lord Jesus. Most of us, I suppose, will fall into that second category. But before you, before you fall into any kind of depression, let me say that the evil spirit saw the boy that was brought to Jesus. Do you remember in Mark chapter 9? An evil spirit threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, and he was writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening, Jesus asked, since he was a little boy, his dad said. And his dad said this, have mercy on us and help us if you can. And Jesus said, what do you mean if I can? Anything is possible if a person believes. And the wee boy's dad said to him, I do believe but help me overcome my unbelief. This is where I think most of us are. We hover between belief and unbelief. We seem stuck between faith and lack of faith. <coughs> Excuse me. When it comes to faith, we find ourselves in a battle between the result of prayer and unanswered prayer. <coughs> 
Have you ever prayed something and it wasn't answered? But let me ask you a second question. Have you ever prayed something and it was answered? Let me tell you, that's God acting to help your faith. Cry out to Jesus when you can. That's him understanding our struggles and our faith. When we cry out to him to help us in our unbelief, we're admitting that he alone has the grace to grant us God's mercy. When we cry out to him, admitting that he alone has the power to embrace God's word. When we cry out to him, we're admitting that he alone has the authority to overcome our unbelief. I'm reminded of a story that might be meaningful to someone as one night Christine, were at, Christine and I were at an event in Glasgow and it was quite late at night when we left the event to drive home away the other side of Glasgow, the other side of the Clyde. And when we got out to our car, it wouldn't start. The car just wouldn't start. And God bless them, these drunk Glasgow folk came up and it was, hey Jimmy, will your car no start? And they gave us a push and it started. And we drove home from the other side of Glasgow to Colsai in the power of prayer. Every time we came to a traffic light, we were frightened to stop. It turned green. Every time we came to a roundabout, we slowed down, but we were able to keep going. And we prayed our way home from the other side of Glasgow to Colsai. For those who are technically interested in what was wrong with the car, I haven't a clue, I couldn't even tell you. But for those of you who are theologically interested in what happened to the car, God kept that car going for us, and we got home that night safe and sound. When it comes to faith, we find ourselves in a battle between the results of prayer and unanswered prayer. Our spiritual mind says, believe, and our logic says, it's impossible. What do we do? Cry out to Jesus, and He understands our struggle with faith. He has the grace and the power and the authority to overcome any unbelief that we may have. When we develop the faith of the Roman soldier, we will see results. That Roman officer could have let many obstacles stand between him and Jesus. Pride in his position, doubt, money, language, distance, time, self-sufficiency, power. But he didn't look at these things. If he did not let these barriers block his approach to Jesus, we don't need to either. What keeps you from Christ? You may be sitting here in the storehouse this January morning, and you may be thinking to yourself, gosh, this is a right old-fashioned sermon. This is a right old-fashioned way of doing things. This is a right old-fashioned suit and collar and tie. Am I the only one? No, I'm not. But I want to tell you that the Word of God, as I have read it to you and expounded it to you, is not old-fashioned. It's so up-to-date that it's still in tomorrow. It's there for you in tomorrow. And so I need to ask, what keeps you from Christ? Perhaps you're a Christian today and you could come closer to Christ. Perhaps you're not a Christian today and you could accept Christ and feel that wonderful glory for the very first time. Jesus said to the Roman officer, go back home because you believe it has happened. Because you believe it has happened. And that young servant was healed at that time. I want to ask this morning that your most fervent prayers will be answered in exactly the same way. May you develop an amazing faith in our Lord Jesus. I'm not a great one for just repeating things, but I'm going to repeat that. May you develop an amazing faith in our Lord Jesus. And just a word of prayer. Father, like that, we boys 
Father, may we say we believe. Help our unbelief. You are an amazing Lord. Father God, help us to have amazing faith in you. Amen. Really, really kind of you to come this morning and to share that great word with us. And I think if we're honest, we could all do with a wee bit more faith um, as a church and as individuals as well. And in this closing song, uh, we're going to sing about one of the other three key things that was mentioned at the end of Corinthians, faith, hope, and love. And we're going to sing the voice of hope. So Lorraine will lead us in that.
Amen. <laughs> That's wonderful. Soon she will be joining us on the on the worship team, so you should be praying for her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is that wonderful to you know be in the presence of God. Have you received something this morning? Have you received something from the Lord? Yes. Praise God. Thank you so much for that powerful word. You know, when you were talking, the Lord just spoke to me. You have your message for next week. So thank you for leading me to what the Lord is, is going to speak to us next week. It's so important that we can continue trusting the Lord. You know, having such a faith moves mountain. Amen. And this week, I call upon you again as we gather on Wednesday to pray. Please make a time with us. Let's join our, our faith together. Let's join our voice together. Cry on God and um, for our church, not only for the church, but for you know our community that we live in as well. We want the save unsaved be saved. And so make time with us next week as we, you know, you know, this week actually start the week started today. So on Wednesday, come come and join us as we pray to our God. Amen. We come to the end of our service. I just want us to rise up on our feet as we just share our last prayer, if you can, just. Lord, we thank you this morning for such a wonderful time. We thank you for being among us. We thank you, Lord, for your word that has come to us, that we need to have this amazing faith, this great faith that this centurion displayed before Jesus. And Jesus was even amazed Father, may we have such a great faith, Lord, in everything that we do, that we can call upon you. May we be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that as they declare that even the Lord does not save them, they will not bow. That, Father, we will, in all things, at all times, in all situations, and in all conditions, continue to trust you because you are trustworthy. You are faithful to your word. The Bible says that have you not said it, would you not do it? That which Lord you have said, you will do it. Because you are not a man that is your lie. We thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. As we go through this week, Jehovah God, we are asking for your grace, Lord, upon our life. We ask that, Father, you will direct our steps this week. May you direct us, O Lord, by your word. Let our steps, O God, be guided, Jehovah, by your word. Those of us who are going into work, Father, we pray for protection. We pray for your presence with us. Lord, cause us to be able to speak to the unsaved Lord. You will put your word in our mouth. Give us strength. Give us the confident Lord to be able to speak to the people around us. This week, Lord, cause us, Lord, to be a blessing to others. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, as we return next Sunday again. We will have something to tell others. We have some. We have a testimony in our mouth. This morning we say thank you, Lord. Let this week of God be a wonderful week to every one of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we don't have to share the grace. Let's share the grace of fellowship together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for coming and God bless you.